Hi everyone, hope that you all are doing well. First of all, thanks all for sharing your support for the channel. If you people are considering joining a more close knitted community, I have enabled a membership community you can consider joining. So today we will be discussing how to add validation to your REST API with a small code example. So first let's, let me tell you that what is validation. So validation basically is being provided that uh, whenever your API is getting hit, uh, we try to validate the data and then we proceed further for the uh, DB calls or maybe what, what whatever data has been requested for that API, right? But a uh, Spring Boot has provided, Spring has basically provided a validation with a dependency. So basically it, it adds on to your APIs only that before you hit your uh, REST API, the data has been validated and if the data is incorrect, the error or exception would be thrown to it. It is basically that we are not going into the process of uh, using the data inputs and performing some operations and then validating the data, but it is done beforehand only. The validation is being performed beforehand only. When your REST endpoint has been hit by someone, the data is being validated beforehand before going into the uh, process of that data and then validating it. We are not uh, here. What we'll do is we'll not uh, validate the data by ourselves manually. It would be validated by Spring itself. So how we can do it? Let's uh, jump to a coding example. Uh, let's perform the coding example. But before we jump into writing the code, uh, if you find my videos informative and if you learn something out from my videos, Please do like, share, comment on the video and please, if new to the channel, please subscribe and press the bell icon. So let's go to the ID and let's create a project, a new spring starter project. And let's name it as validation, right? And Java version is 17. Let's go on next. Here actually we are uh, doing a very small example. So we are not performing any database operation. I am just making a REST endpoint. So let's use Spring Web and we also require validation API dependency. So let's finish it up and let's the let the code get him. So we can see that the project has been imported. Let's uh, open the pom.xml and let me show you the dependencies that we have added to the project. One is of Spring Boot starter validation dependency and the other one is a simple Spring Web dependency, right? So uh, what we can do is we can simply go to the packages. Let's make a package of model. So here we are not dealing with the database. So it would be a simple example where I'll be making a simple model uh, with one or two fields and a simple REST controller that will be hit from Postman, right? So let's make a new package. And let's say it as model and another one new package. Let's say controller, right? So in the model package, let's make a class. Let's make a class called as maybe user or users. Let's finish it up. Let's add some data to it. So let me add few fields to it as this is not a database class. Uh, the, we are not uh, inserting this uh, data into the database. We are not dealing with the database. So we can simply add the fields here, right? So let me make it as private string name and private. Okay, this is wrong spelling private string email right so uh, firstly when we are designing our model class from there itself we start validating the fields right so we have some annotations that are being provided under the validation dependency that we'll be using on the model itself that will validate that okay these things are th these things have some format and if uh, the user is inputting data other than that format, then the exception should be thrown. Then uh, it is a candidate of an error or an exception, right? So Spring should handle that and return the exception or error to the user before it goes into the REST call, right? So how to add that validation? So like uh, if, if, if I'm saving a user name, then 
I guess it shouldn't be uh, empty, right? So let me add a, a, a validation of not empty. So let me say not empty, right? And also we can pass a message here by simply saying message, message equals name can not be empty right so if the user gives a empty name uh, in its rest call then this error should be shown to the user that name cannot be empty right now email id right so email id also cannot be empty for us so let me first put in a simple validation of not empty right email cannot be empty and we can also validate that uh, it's a proper email. So how to do that? Uh, we, we can also validate that this is a proper email. So how to do that? It has provided some predefined annotation. So the annotation is of email, right? And what we can do is constraints email and we can, or rather what we have done, we can use it of Jakarta email of constants okay we can use of Jakarta let me remove this let me say at the rate email and we can have message right and we can simply say not valid email right or more generically email should be valid if the person enters a uh, invalid email then this error should be shown to the user right so let me now make getters and setters so let's go on source and let me generate the getters and setters right now we don't require it but yes we should use it Right, we should make a proper model class. Uh, right, so the validation gets started from our model class itself. So how to do that? You can simply mark a few of the, you can use few of the annotations that are being provided by validation uh, dependency and you can mark your fields with that. Right, here we have done it for name and email ID that email ID should be valid and email ID should not be empty and name should not be empty. You can do it for any of the fields that you are adding, right? So let's go to the controller class and let's make another class for uh, handling the rest controller. So let's say user rest controller. And we can mark this as a rest controller first. Rest controller. Now uh, we have to make a method right of posting uh, we have to make a method of posting the data right so let's mark this as post mapping and uh, let's say in say public we can return the response entity right response entity and we can say create user right now whatever we are ex expecting what are whatever we are accepting from the user right so it should also be validated or it should also be told to the controller that these this object that has been getting as an input to this rest call should be validated right for that what do you have to do is you have to mark this as at the rate valid right you have to mark this as at the rate valid and also at the rate request body and we should have the user object right we have the user object that we have defined users it was users right yes users and user right so this is how you define uh, the let me remove the un unwanted imports we don't need this we don't need response body right so uh, this is how uh, we are making the method and also what will happen is that when the validation of the fields would be done by the spring it will be binding out your exception or error right so that binding of exception or error should be handled by you in your controller call 
so what we can do is we can also accept binding result or we can also pass it as a method parameter let me pass binding binding result right binding result right so uh, now what we have to do is we have to first check that uh, the binding results doesn't have any exception or error so if in case your data is not valid that you have given as an input to your rest call then binding result would have the exact exception or error that that is occurring in your call so if we apply an if condition and we say that binding result dot has error if it has an error then what we have to do is we have to return the response entity uh, response entity uh, response to this api and give that exact error to the user that what is the exact error that is occurring in your uh, rest call as you have given a invalid data to the call so what we can do is return new response response entity and then we can pass the binding result binding result dot get all error dot get zero dot get default message right so this will show the default message to the user that whatever thing whatever uh, error has occurred that if let's suppose that you haven't given the name in your request then the exact error message would be that the name shouldn't be empty that we have given here that this ex exact message would be passed on to this binding result i am getting the get i am doing get zero and get the default result what you can do is you can simply loop over your all errors and also display all your errors to the user right so i am just picking up the first error uh, on the zeroth index so that's why i'm doing get zero and get the default message you can simply uh, iterate over binding result dot get all errors and also display the uh, all errors to the user and then we have to return the uh, status http status dot bad request right so this is how we'll be uh, showing the error to the user right if some error has occurred if some field was missing or if some field has any uh, format issue or it is not valid as per the request then this uh, particular thing would uh, simply throw an error exact error to the user that this this, this field has er error please correct it right so if if this condition is false then what we can do is we can simply say return simply say response entity dot response entity dot okay right and we can say user is being created right so this is how your uh, endpoint would look like like right so if your binding result has some error that means that your fields provided by the user has some error then it will throw the error otherwise the user will get created right so now this is how you valid you pro you add validation to your rest endpoint right first validation point is your model class from where the messages would be picked or from where the what what all validations you have applied on this email id would be picked and then rest controller should know that this body this uh, uh, input that has been provided by the user is is need to be validated by spring so this is how the uh, complete flow works right so we have added add that it valid and we have also given messages in the model class right so now let's go to the main class and let's run the code and we'll also use postman to uh, test the code uh, just a minute let's go on the rest controller i haven't given the mapping so let me give the mapping also request mapping or rather we can simply give it here only let's say users right so let me now go on the main class and let me run the code let me just simply run the so our application has started let's go on postman 
and this is my let me click on here so this is my call right and let's go to the body so we already have an email field so let me add a name field as well so let me add a name raman right so uh, this is a happy scenario wherein we are we are also adding the name we are also adding the email id and email id format is also correct right so let me add it yes so it says user is being created so this er this message is coming from your controller part that the binding result doesn't has any error so it is giving user is being created right so now if i say that i don't give a name right i have removed the name so now let me hit the call let me hit again the call so you can see name cannot be empty so this message is coming from your model class name cannot be empty right so let's also test the email part so let me just simply say control z we have the name uh, let's say that i give an incorrect email address like a a a a a and we are not giving at the rate we are not giving any dot uh, com or anything so the format doesn't match the email so we are simply giving a text so let me hit this so you can see email should be valid so this particular annotation that we have applied is validating that the format of the email is correct or not and if it isn't correct then the this message would be displayed right and let's also see that we have also added a validation for uh, empty email id so so you can see email cannot be empty so the first error was that email cannot be empty so it picked up this error right the, it was that there if the email is empty then it is also not a valid email right so email is empty so that it it has picked this error and thrown this error email cannot be empty right so this is how you can apply the validations on your rest endpoint so this was it from this video hope that it was useful and informative for you people if you are willing to uh, join the our close knitted community and wherein we will have some live sessions as well so you can consider joining by clicking on the join button on my channel and hope that we, this video would help you out uh, if you find my videos informative please do like share comment on the videos and if new to the channel please subscribe and press the bell icon Hope to see you in the next video till then happy learning.